Welcome back to Realize Training. In this video, we are going to be creating a What's Happening Today slide. And to do that, we will go through the weather item, the time, and also the countdown, as well as a calendar app and the maps and traffic app. So we're going to create a slide to help keep people up to date with automated information today. You'll see I grabbed just some simple images and put them in the background. I used uh, the free website pixabay.com. And then I just dropped in a couple of headers here to frame all of our content. So all we need to do is drop in the different apps on the side here. The first step that we're going to go through is the maps and traffic. This is probably one of the easiest apps to use. All you do is just grab it. We're going to drop it right onto the right side. And then just like any app, let's go ahead and resize it. There we go. Now, the default that you'll notice is a uh, New York City. So first, what we want to do is go over on the left to our properties. And let's use we are uh, where we are. Let's use Minneapolis. Minnesota pops right up. Click on it, and then all of a sudden, you're brought to Minneapolis, Minnesota on the map. Now, when you hover over the map, uh, you'll notice that part of it is actually semi transparent it has a higher opacity but then the left side of it your cursor will turn into the hand grab so you can actually position the map exactly where you need to by using this left bar on the over here and then i can move it even if my cursor goes off of the app to position maybe minneapolis right in the center and then i can use the zoom in and zoom out to get exactly the traffic area that i want to see maybe this is going downtown Great. So maybe that looks pretty good right there. And then there's a checkbox to show the traffic. So when you click that, now you can see, obviously, we have some rush hour this morning. Just like anything else, there is some page animations that you can use as well to make the content fly in as soon as the page is shown. Now, the next thing that we're going to show, let's drag this down just a little bit more. The next app that is extremely easy to use is the live weather app. So all we need to do is take that, let's drag it right over the top. We'll do a little bit more size and positioning with this in just a second. First, let's also select our location in the auto selector on the left. Minneapolis will show up. The default is Celsius, so you want to change that to Fahrenheit. And then the rest of the settings, you can uh, see how many, uh, if you want to show your hourly forecast or your daily forecast. Typically, I'll go three to five days. We can maybe even add a little bit more so that it fills the space just above this area a little bit more. And then resize it just like so. And now this weather app will keep itself up to date every single day. Let's change this back to daily. Okay, great. Now the next app that we can add is our time and uh, timing app. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at our, um, uh, actually let's add the date app. Let's throw in the date at the top so we know what's happening on a specific day that keeps itself up to date. So let's drop in the date right at the top. size it accordingly. And then what I'll want to do is actually make it look exactly like the what's happening text. So I'm going to click on my what's happening text. It's just a regular text item. If I double click into it, I can see that it is the open sans type. It is 85 point font. And then if I want, I can just go ahead and I should have my I should have my color selector once I uh, click on the date. Uh, so I can use uh, whichever color that I would like. Let's change that back to the correct one here. Okay, so now let's click on the date. Let's change the uh, font to Open Sans. The date also can be specific to location. 
by the way. So you can actually set a date depending on where it is located in the world. So if you have multiple locations in different areas or even across the country, this will help keep your dates current. So obviously for this, we're just going to set it also to Minneapolis, Minnesota. We're gonna set our font to 85. And then let's set our color to that dark gray. Now all I need to do is make sure that it lines up nicely. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of room at the end here because if there are longer, like when September rolls around next year or something, it's got a little bit of room so the month can expand a little bit. But now when I unselect it, it looks like it is uh, fits nicely on the top header. Actually, what I can also do is I can also set this to be completely capitalized so that it fits the what's happening capitalized text. If you don't have too much room to uh, um, work with this, you have a variety of different ways you can format your date, including just a short notation. So it's OCT instead of the full October. You can also select either just the digits to show up, the day only, the year only, any kind of information that works with your content. Okay, and then finally you have your alignment and shadow options for this. I think it'll look good if we just keep it like this. And now we have a nice header that will keep itself up to date based on the day. Now the next thing we're gonna add in is the time app. This is also extremely simple. We're just gonna drop it right in at the top. And you'll notice obviously uh, this also has a city selector so that you can make sure that if you have worldwide time, you are selecting the right time zone. And you can choose to remove the seconds, which is what I usually do for most of the apps. Let's make this fit with the same color. And maybe let's move it next to our upcoming events. And for this, there is not a uh, selector, so you just need to change the uh, font size in order to make it larger or smaller. Pretty simple with this, but the clock also has a hidden functionality, which you may find very interesting. Don't forget this. If you click the clock drop down, it can turn itself into a countdown. So let's click back on it. Let's use Control C and Control V to make a copy of our clock. And then we are going to use it for our winter countdown. So if you're in, a, uh, in an area in the Midwest, you know that we have some nasty winters. So what we're going to do is prepare people with a nice countdown of when the first day of winter is. We'll use the countdown option. And now once you select that, you can now have your handles where you can resize it exactly where you need it to be. And then your target date is what it's going to count down from. So I happen to know that December 21st this year is the first day of winter. At a specific time, you can uh, even select right down to the time if you want to uh, have a uh, seconds countdown before your event starts. Go ahead and change it to your date that day, and then just change the minutes and the time of the, uh, uh, of the day. You can also choose to add in your seconds, which also is kind of cool. So let's go ahead and do that because it kind of adds some movement to the display as well. And we'll pull the text down just a little bit. Now this one does not have any indentation, so typically what I will do is I will kind of just try to center with the handles and make sure that it looks nice wherever it is. Now at the end, maybe let's have it say, uh, Ray Winter is here. So once the countdown finishes and it gets to the target date, it will show this Hooray Winter is here. There is a preview message. This is what it will look like. Maybe I'll just take off is here and just say hooray winter. There we go. Now, pretty simple. We have this awesome winter countdown. We have our traffic. We have our weather, our time, and our date. Now, the last thing that we want to add to this what's happening slide is maybe the current events for what's going on. So to do that, we can use the calendar app. Let's go ahead and grab that and drop that right into this box. 
It will come with some pre-formatted content so you can see how it will look so that you can do your sizing properly. Let's fit it right into that zone. And this will actually uh, crawl. So I suggest putting the very tip top of the app to the top of a bar or something somewhere. So as this crawls up, when there's more events that overflow, it will look like it is disappearing off into that bar. Now you can select either a Google or a Microsoft calendar provider. Google is probably the easiest, though they're both very easy. We're going to select a, uh, a demo account I created inside of Google. And you press this plus button because you need to connect your Google account to the calendar. So that way it can pull your events. So when I press the plus button, it's going to open up a new page in my browser. If you are already signed into an account, for example, this is my primary account, it will already ask you just to simply connect to, the, to that account. So what I would say is be very careful if you do not want to connect your own personal calendars to this to sign out first or sign into a specific calendar first before you click that plus button and then you uh, or before you give your permissions. But don't worry, there's not a huge deal if you actually do. Your admin or uh, someone with access to the settings of your signage channel can always disconnect that account and it will no longer pull its information from your account. So for this, I'm going to say use other account. I'll use my demo account and I will simply sign into it. Now, the first thing that's going to pop up is this access message. Now, this is what will pop up if you are already signed in. It will ask, do you want to cancel or do you want to allow the player app to connect to your account and pull your events? So when you click allow, you'll then be brought to this Google account added page successfully. And you can simply close this out, which will close that tab and bring you back to your editor. But now when I click on this Google G Suite account, I will now see any calendars that I have connected in that account. And as you know, Microsoft and Google allows you to create many calendars. So this is a great way if you wanted to just create one account for multiple calendars that you can have multiple uh, different event apps pulling different events. You can select them all here. So for this, I'm just going to select the demo calendar I created. And let's just go ahead and select that specific calendar. Now, I just created some events that are just event one, three. So these look exactly like how I want them to look. And then I can select the start date. So if I didn't want to pull today's days, I could start by pulling tomorrow's days. You'll see, notice today is October 13th. Now this will start pulling events from the 14th, which is tomorrow. Almost always we want to show today's events. Or if you just wanted to show the week's events, you can do that as well. Now, often you'll want to uh, condense or show only a certain amount of information. So again, keep in mind how off, how much this will scroll and how many events that you have. If you have a lot of events per day, maybe only select one day so that your calendar doesn't need to scroll so much and your uh, visitors can actually see um, some repetition of what's going on. And then you can hide past events. So what this means is after 10 a.m. or so, since this is the first event, if I click this hide past events, 10 a.m. will no longer show up because we are past that time. And also within the other calendars, there are also, when you create your events, there is a location spot and there's also a description. So if you would like to show the location of the event and the description, directly from that calendar, go ahead and press those and you'll see those descriptions pop up directly under your event information here. And then you have the regular standard information as well, which you can change your text size, your font, your text color, some shadow and your animations as well. So that concludes the what's happening today slides and to create a nice automated informational slide that now you don't even need to do anything with. It will keep itself up to date every single day that you show this on your displays. Tune in for the next video where we go through the different social media apps. Thank you.